Tonight's proceeds go to a cause that I care a lot about, and I'm happy to say many hockey people seem to share that concern. Here to take part in this very pleasant presentation are John A. Ziegler, Jr., President of the NHL, Alan Eagleson, Executive Director of the NHL Players Association, and Gordon Cunningham, President of Trilon Financial Corporation and National Chairman of Diabetes Canada. Thank you, Alan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank all of the players for participating in the function, to all of the candidates, to all of the winners. Uh, Felicitations, uh, surtout uh, des amis canadiens français qui sont ici comme candidats. We're very proud as NHL Player Association members and the National Hockey League for what you people have been able to do for Diabetes Canada. Tonight, you'll find yourselves in a situation where you have contributed in excess of $100,000 to Diabetes Canada. <laughs> the coaches in the NHL are often underpaid and always overstressed. So the man in charge of stress this year is now the man I introduce, John Ziegler. <laughs> Alan, thank you and the players. As everybody knows, this night, the season, we can't get on without you. Ladies and gentlemen, you here, and all of you in the hockey audience, thank you, your contribution of being part of this audience, but makes it go on. And because of that, I'm proud to say our fifth year, we're able, with our check tonight, present to Diabetes Canada now a total of over $500,000. I know you're as proud as I am, for this great cause. And now, Gordon Cunningham on behalf of Diabetes Canada. Gordon. Thank you very much, John, and to you, Alan. We at Diabetes Canada are very much appreciative of the ongoing tremendous support that we receive from both the National Hockey League and the NHL Players Association. More than one million Canadians currently suffer from diabetes. What is less well known is that the cost of diabetes to the Canadian economy is a staggering $2.5 billion per year. Also, insulin, that wonderful discovery of the Canadians banting and best more than 60 years ago, is not a cure, but only a treatment. Diabetics live in the hope that finding the elusive cure will bring them freedom. I gratefully accept this check tonight on their behalf. It will help to find the cure. Thank you very much. Well, the coaches in the NHL are often underpaid, and at least 20 of them are overstressed every year. So let's have a hand for the job they do. That's enough. That's enough, it'll go to their heads. Next thing, they'll want a union. They'll be arguing with referees. Besides, they have the Jack Adams Award already. So let's meet the presenters. Scotty Bowman won the Adams in 1977. That year, his Montreal Canadiens won their second of four consecutive Stanley Cups. Nicole Stoffman received a Gemini nomination for her portrayal of Stephanie Kay on Degrassi Junior High. Please welcome the ingenious and the ingenue, Scotty Bowman and Nicole Stoffman. Mr. Bowman, I've read that a lot of coaches have been losing their jobs this year, and I don't think that's fair. Well, as a former coach, uh, I can agree with you. I mean, if a team does badly, it's like a television show with low ratings, right? They, I mean, they don't just fire the director. They cancel the show. You mean cancel the whole team? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good idea, though, but uh, I think you'd have to talk to the league about it. Okay. <laughs> and here with a review of this year's uh, nominees for the Coach of the Year is a truly great broadcaster, Dick Irvin. The nominees for the Jack Adams Award have all turned their respective teams into serious contenders. Terry Crisp had a remarkable rookie coaching season. He took over an established team and guided them to first place with a club record 105 points. The Flames, Terry Crisp. Jacques Demers is a player's coach. 
He has brought stability to the Red Wings, who finished first in the Norris Division. Detroit's Jacques Demers. Jean Perron compiled an enviable record with Montreal. His three years there included a Stanley Cup victory. And this year, the Canadians finished on top of the tough Adams Division. Jean Perron. And the winner of the Jack Adams Award is... Jacques Demers. I wanted to be here once, two years in a row. I would like certainly to thank Mr. and Mrs. Illich, the great owners of the Detroit Red Wings, Jim Lights, superb general manager Jim DeVolano, who helped me be where I am this this year and last year. Not forget the players who certainly, without them, I would not be here. Jean Perron, Terry Chris, Terry for his first year in the NHL did a marvelous job. Jean, I wish you good luck and you know what I mean. <laughs> to my wife, Debbie, who supported me so much. You're never home when you're a coach. And I would like to thank those people. I would like to share this trophy that means so much to me. And maybe Mr. Ziegler, Mr. O'Neill will, to my demand, add to this. I would like to share this. I lost a very, very, very special dear friend, a brother, someone that I'll never forget, Barkley Plager this year, who made me the coach I am. I would like to share this with Barkley that I lost, and we all lost, uh, this uh, late winter. And I hope that possibly it's never been asked before, but maybe by asking it could be done that Jacques Demaris and Barkley player could be in this trophy. Barkley, you were a great man. I'm so proud of sharing this with you. Thank you. Well, poor Phil Esposito. This year, his career goal mark was passed by Marcel Dion. His career assists overtaken by Wayne Gretzky. Phil was so upset he tried to trade for a new league statistician. <laughs> Here to present the Art Ross Trophy to this season's scoring leader, the only man ever to successfully go from player to coach to broadcaster without compromising his ideals or improving his diction. <laughs> Rangers general manager, Phil Esposito. Thank you, Alan. Well, I'm getting used to watching my statistics fall, but I know there's one record that Wayne and Marcel will probably never break, and that's the most brothers as general managers, I think, Tony? I hope. You better stay there a long time, buddy. I don't think I will. Anyway. <laughs> on the way to winning his first Art Ross trophy, Mario Lemieux played a great season. Here from Sports Weekend is CBC's Voice of the Olympics, Brian Williams, with a look at Mario's year. I've seen enough of it. 1987-88 has truly been the season that Pittsburgh's Mario Lemieux stepped out of the shadows and into the National Hockey League spotlight. It all started with the Canada Cup. And for the first time, Mario had the opportunity to show just how good he can be when surrounded by the greatest players in the world. 11 goals in only nine games, he was quite simply magnificent. But that was just a preview. Mario's season highlights included three goals and a record six points in the All-Star game, career highs in both goals and power play goals, all proving that at 22 years of age, truly the best is yet to come for Pittsburgh's Mario Lemieux. Ladies and gentlemen, a young man who's destined for the Hall of Fame, one exciting guy to watch, the Art Ross winner, Mario Lemieux. Can I have him? Thank you, Phil. Uh, it is certainly a great honor for me to receive this award. Uh, there's so many people that I have to thank, starting with the players, of course. Uh, I think they deserve a lot of credit for this award. Without them, I wouldn't be here. I'd like to thank the Penguins organization for
for their support and uh, uh, I've been there for the last four years and they always treated me very well. So uh, I'd like to thank also uh, the fans in Pittsburgh. They've been uh, with us for the last four years and really kept the franchise alive there. Um, finally, I'd just like to congratulate all the other nominees here tonight. Thank you. Time now to meet this year's first team All-Stars and to perform that task, a Hall of Famer who led the Montreal Canadiens to eight Stanley Cup championships. He was the first player to ever score 50 goals in 50 games. He is a legend, the one and only original Rocket Maurice the Rocket Richard. Thank you, thank you very much. It's a real honor for me to be here with all those big star. And uh, I think I would have loved to play with them. You know, in all the years that I played with Canadian, I think I would have loved to have played with Younger. On big left wing, like last season rookie of the year, the Los Angeles King, Luc Robitaille. On right wing, from the league leading Calgary Flame, Hawk and Lou. At center, this year leading scorer, Pittsburgh, Mario Lemieux. On defense, last year Norris winner, Boston Bruins, Raymond Bourque. Also on defense, a Norris nominee this year from the Washington Capitol, Scott Stevens. In goal, a Hart Trophy nominee this year, the Oilers, great Grand Fuhrer. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your 1988-87-88 All-Star team. Good luck. past year's events and makes them funny. <laughs> My recent social studies exam. No, the Hockey Night News. That's coming up next. <laughs> what are your exams what have you to do with that? We'll be right back with the NHL Awards, live from the Metro Toronto Convention Center.